尊敬的各位来宾、女士们、先生们，大家。Distinguished guests, good afternoon. Welcome to the Phoenix Forum of the World Economic Forum 2015. And the topic for our forum, for our session, is the global rise of China's entrepreneurs. So we are very honored to bring you a clash of minds here. And I believe you are very familiar with this gentleman here. He's Mr. Hu Yihu from Phoenix Satellite TV. Welcome to Dalian. OK. I'm very glad to arrive in here. This is our third time to stand on the stage together. And for the third time, I realize it's, it's different. It's changing. It's getting more and more beautiful. And then the unchanged thing. The unchanged thing is our interest in Chinese economy and the global economy. We not only care about the Chinese economy, but also how Chinese enterprises is performing on the global stage. So in the one hour's time, we have with us five very important panelists with us to discuss this issue. And as Yu Yang has mentioned, Chinese enterprises is on the rise on the global stage. In fact, some of our panelists just came to Dalian from Paris, some from Washington, and some from Milan. So they really gathered here to thousands of miles. And with respect to introduction, I will follow the lady first principle. I would like to first introduce um, Ms. Marguerite Cross, founder and executive chairman of Alco Worldwide USA. And she has a very beautiful and poetic Chinese name. So, Marco uh, Yumi welcome to China, welcome to Italian. And for me, I would like to introduce to you the four handsome gentlemen. So, Mr. Liu Ziren, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, New Soft Corporation. And the one in the middle is Mr. Chen Feng, Chairman of the Board, HNA Group, Hainan Airlines Group. And this gentleman, you are very familiar with him, Mr. Liu Changle, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Phoenix Satellite TV Station. And I believe here, many of the young entrepreneurs would like to become your friend, Mr. Xiang being the professor and the dean of Chiang Kong Graduate School of Business. And so um, Yu Yang and I will take turns to moderate the session and ask questions to the panelists. And, and later, we'll open the floor. Now, but as according to Lady First Principle, and um, as we are all guests here, so please um, be, be welcome. You can take take a glass of water first, and uh, with, with with more 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 water, and uh, you have you can uh, get, have better speeches. And while Miss Cross is um, taking the rest and taking some water, I would like to introduce her costume because this has Chinese element in it. This is specially designed for the Davos Forum here in Dalian. So thank you very much, because she's really spent a great amount of effort into this. And APCO is a worldwide PR company. So I would like to ask Ms. Cross this question. So honestly, honestly speaking, you are in the international PR sector. So you deal with government, various governments of, of the world. So. So for this topic, global rise of the Chinese enterprise, do you really see they are on the rise? Do you agree with that? And when you are dealing with various governments, what do you think is the greatest challenge that the Chinese enterprises face? I think that, uh, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. Um, it's always special to come back to Dalian. Uh, it's my fifth time, I think. Um, I think that uh, there is uh, definitely a rise of Chinese entrepreneurship, and I think the world welcomes that because I think it will help to, uh, in the long term, to provide a lot of stability to the Chinese economy um, and a lot of jobs, as we heard this morning from your premier. I think that the biggest challenge is one of uh, market entry. We do um, the broadest sense of communications, and we help a lot of companies enter new markets. And one of the challenges I think the Chinese entrepreneurs have is that um, is the lack of attention sometimes paid um, in, China, uh, in Chinese companies when we work with them compared to others about um, investing in branding, investing in their uh, reputational equity. 
Uh, a lot of tension is played on ROI, return on investment, not so much on ROR, return on reputation. And if the Chinese companies are entering these markets, it's very important for them to uh, be able to build brands that people will trust and respect or the companies won't grow. And there's an interesting dichotomy. Uh, what works well in China, especially having China in the name, does not work well overseas. And so one of the things, and we can talk more about this as we go, is how Chinese companies can, um, can think about their face as they go abroad to avoid some of the problems and create some of the greater opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Cross, uh, yes, just now Ms. Cross have mentioned that you need to establish your form to core values and brands. So this might be uh, the greatest advantage when you're dealing with various governments. But uh, how many Chinese brands do you know, may I ask you? Uh, or what Chinese enterprises do you think has a really brand building in, internationally? Interesting. We did a survey not too long ago in the U.S. And, um, you know, there are quite a number of Chinese companies in the top 50. I think there are something like a, a dozen. And um, the, um, in the American survey, 97% of the people couldn't name one, not even one. Um, and so that tells you a little bit about how difficult that, uh, that step is. And, um, and so I think, you know, as, as Chinese companies are acquiring new brands, um, especially if they already, like Lenovo, have brands. We've worked for many years for Costco. I think that there are bigger companies. Certainly the airlines um, are, are one of those. And I think some of the newer companies um, are also doing a better job at this. But I think that basically um, companies, uh, the Chinese companies aren't as well known I think people are surprised at how big they are, and they don't have an understanding of what their core values are, what they stand for. And I think that's a shame because some of these companies are doing really great things. Ms. Cross, you can see how many companies So, so just now, Ms. Cross mentioned the fact that not many Chinese enterprises, big ones, are recognized by the foreign um, people. But I would like to know which which. Uh, f Airline did you take to come to Dalian? Because I think you can take the Hainan Airlines, and uh, as M Mr. Chen would would like to 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 um, introduce to us that in the past year Hainan Airlines has done a, a huge amount of uh, job in investment in the um, operations. So, what's your take on Ms. Krause's opinion? So, what do you think is the greatest challenge for Chinese enterprises to go abroad, and or what are the rule or the challenges you have? I think this is a interesting or funny question because 30 years ago we had struggled to f get ourselves feed, but 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 now after 30 years we we still have the same appetite. Now, but 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 we use that appetite. We are getting diabetes and we can't get used to it. But we still have to learn from the Westerners, from the Germans, from the Americans, and when we are. We, but as we are learning from the Western teachers, and s the teachers get into trouble themselves. So we are on the stage as we putting on our leather shoes, we step on the global stage. Now, this is an ine inevitable path. We have to go out. Chinese enterprises have to go global, because this is a global, uh, an era of globalization. So it's important for Chinese enterprises to learn how to go global and how to learn from the mistakes. So will you get well well known very soon? You won't be very fast. Just like a local guy um, gets on to the local again, it takes time for him to become the big shot. So time has proved the Hainan Airlines it's okay. It's all right. Now we are one of the five-star service airlines, and it's it's no problem that we can be the service of some of the of the Amer American airlines. Now some of the airlines fine, safe. Um, for example, American Airlines they have the the antis, um, to serve, but it's fine. And but 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 they are they're putting on professional smiles, but 
but but but for our air stewardess, they're younger and they smile sincerely from the heart. So I think Chinese people are capable of building good brands, but it takes time. It takes time, and then we have to make some mistakes. We have to pay our costs in order to achieve that. And I I have realized that. <laughs> the the lady sitting next to you is putting on an awkward smile. So how about Mr. Xiangbing? What what do you what's your take? Because um, Chinese people, uh, Chinese China is learning from Western and teachers to on the path of economic development and and and, and how to develop its economy. But now the teachers getting problems. So what's your take on that? Well, we have a long way to go. We have many things to learn. While being confident, we need to be very, very humble. This is very important. As we look back on the 30 years history, China's economy was um, globalized. It's not active, but it's a passive sense. Because even though we are at the second largest economy, our management is not as good enough. We have Japanese management, Korean investment, not to mention American management, and much better European management. So we have to learn. So we are in a passive globalization path. So the few years ago, Boa Forum made a very bold, uh, uh, the um, speculation that a few years later, 20 years later, the globalization will play an important role in Chinese e economy. But then it, it comes really fast. The Chinese outward FDI for the first time is greater than the inward FDI. So as we are going out, you need to. You need to have resource consolidation and to establish your core competitiveness. Now, as we compete on the global search, we're not even as good as the Indian global companies. So resource consolidation is a necessary part to survive and to be better. On the other hand, in terms of the global perspective, the global vision, Chinese economies and uh, Chinese enterprises are not, are not doing as good. And secondly, in terms of the um, proper responsibility, Chinese companies are not doing very good. Because for US companies, they're talking about global issues, global problems. But for Chinese companies, they don't re really talk about it. Now, we are the second largest e economy. People expect you to take the responsibility. If you don't talk about that, people are not only envious, not, not happy with you. So. That's another problem. And thirdly, Chinese companies are not good at managing infrastructure, because um, for in, for for in in the past, they as long as they get good government relationship, the business is very good. But then internally, Chinese companies need to improve their internal management, and especially human resource management, because they are now taking advantage of the global human pool, talent pool. And we are in the very rush. And so if you rush here in China, it's fine. But if you, if you rush in other countries, it might get you into trouble. OK, I'm pretty impressed by Mr. Xiang's uh, comment or statement that China was globalized 30 years ago. And then it's, uh, really, it happens really fast that China is go global. And one of the facts is that some of our um, foreign delegates, they can speak fluent Chinese. Now, as we are aware that Mr. Liu Changle, the chairman and CEO of Phoenix Satellite TV, just came back from Mi from Milan, which um, is holding the World Expo right now. So uh, the, the world is interested in, in China. So what's your take on that? Thank you, Yihu. So I am a frequent visitor of World of an Expo. I think this is perhaps related to my profession because media naturally take a great concern on the Expo. Now, this on the Expo in Milan this year, uh, his central topic is agriculture and the food. Now, I went there and I was great, greatly inspired. A few days ago, I visited China pavilions, English pavilions, and American pavilions due to the um, Restraint of time. I can only have time to visit these few pavilions, and uh, as a result of the special um, arrangement, I can visit some more. Now, as I visit the uh, Japan Expo a few years ago, and then 
when I compare it with the Chinese, uh, with, with the Ch Shanghai Expo and compare it with the Korean Expo, so so the 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 queue, the, the the people queuing in in the Milan this year is much longer. The queue are much longer. There are many foreigners queuing. They're very interested, and very few Chi Chinese are there. I don't get the exact number. Later, I was told that that day was the highest day for uh, visitors, and the day the day before that, twenty six thousand people came to see the uh, Chinese pavilion. The British pavilion is themed on bees. It looks like a bee's nest with a lot of uh, flying bees um, simulation. English, Italian, and uh, Chinese, three languages are provided for the tour of uh, British Pavilion. But there were few British visitors to the British uh, Pavilion, and uh, uh, I was quite impressed uh, by that. You see, even there are some Asian languages, the first uh, may be Japanese or Korean, not uh, Chinese. And uh, now the only Asian language in the British uh, Pavilion uh, is Chinese. Uh, it's, it's quite impressive. So uh, indeed, China has uh, got close attention from uh, the international community. And uh, years ago, China yeah. And uh, Chinese investment. So last year, China's outbound investment exceeded two hundred thirty billion U.S. dollars, exceeded for the uh, higher than China's inbound foreign direct investment for the for the first time. And uh, in the years to come, China will invest more in other countries than other countries invest in China. I also agree with uh, the previous uh, speaker that uh, uh, China is not well known for its overseas investment, except for two companies. One is Huawei, the other is ZTE. These two companies sell more equipment overseas than in China. For Huawei, 7 30% of its sales in uh, overseas markets, and for ZTE, 51% of the sales happen in uh, overseas. The boss of Huawei uh, keeps low profile in, in those uh, far away countries in Middle East. I saw a lot of advertisements about Huawei. And in the top ten most recognizable uh, brands, uh, eight of them uh, are American brands. One is Korean brand, and the ten, and the other one is Japanese brand. And we know that five hundred global five hundred companies in the world, China has more than one hundred of them, including Hainan Airlines. But for but in the most important one hundred brands, uh, none of them is. Uh, Chinese brand. So thank you, Mr. Liu, for your remarks. Yeah. And uh, some people actually are uh, actually on to the uh, global company, 500 company. And the new soft, I wish to uh, invite Mr. Liu Jiren from New Soft to make some remarks. And uh, would you like to share with us? Your observation on the international market. New Soft yes, was established about 20, started its operation 24 years ago, and our international operation started from that time. In more than 20 years ago, it was very difficult to travel around, and uh, many people outside China question China's protection of intellectual property and uh, they question China's political system. So all these things in their eyes. We have not established a basis for trust. 
So after more than two decades of reform and uh, opening up, the brand of China is undergoing changes. And uh, this indicates that although we have some uh, uh, problems, uh, it's much easier for China to achieve something. In the past, it was very difficult to hire international talents, and uh, now uh, in our European office, we have more than 100 staff. Only one or two of them uh, comes from uh, China. Due to our past uh, isolation, due to our rapid increase in wealth, we do not pay close attention to branding, particularly individual uh, branding will have a big impact on commerce. For example, we respect local uh, colleagues. In Europe, they have a lot of holidays. And uh, at the beginning, we uh, did not respect their holidays. And uh, there, was, there is a one month holiday in Europe, and uh, for that month, they suddenly uh, disappeared. We now understand that uh, winter in Finland is very short, and in summer very long. So they need that one month. Not impose our cultures upon them, and uh, we do not want to export culture to those countries. And uh, it is not the fact that it, it is not that you are rich so you can get things done. They appreciate their way of life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. And uh, I think five panelists on the podium uh, agree that time is needed for uh, Chinese companies. And the three uh, speakers mentioned they have a problem and uh, compared with other uh, if deal with companies deal with local governments there seems a trust deficit between Chinese companies and their counterparts my question first goes to Mr. Chen of Hainan Airlines we know that in mergers and uh, acquisitions, you, you used a lot of money, and uh, Hainan Airlines emphasized that the importance of exchange rate. Do you think that the exchange rate will help you go out? <laughs> Who tell you that we care about interest rates? I do not care about interest rates. When you're income reach international level it is a global company they, and the things may change several years ago when the renminbi was strong you well you would get some benefits but you cannot get benefits all the time i think i wish you not too much and uh, the question is whether you can abide by the rules of international you need to have global talents and the global resources. And uh, recently, we have quite a bigger move. S a sweet port has more than 200 uh, airports and more than 60,000 people. I acquired that uh, airport management group from Switzerland. And uh, for a big company, of them can get financing from international markets. I think it, uh, lending is a kind of way to relocate resources. And uh, if you work hard enough, then you can recognized by your international peers, and you incorporate your your business into your friends. And uh, we should also be uh, broad-minded. You can hire people whenever they come from. And we need to create a corporate culture and so that this culture will be accepted by people. And what else the government has done for you? What you need most? 
actually is streamlining the process. However, it takes time for idea to come through. And sometimes we need to move faster. If you walk too fast, too slow, you will lost many investment opportunities. And uh, and and otherwise, it it will add cost to the exchange rate. For example, my overseas uh, office need to remit their money back to the charity of my company, and uh, it was also an important job. So for the Chinese company to go global, we need to further uh, streamline the process. Thank you. Now, I wish to direct this question to uh, Mr. Liu. Chinese companies uh, is faced with various challenges in their global efforts. So the media, uh, uh, just like the Monkey King, is playing a leading role in make, and then you have also noticed some uh, faces in our te television the station would like to make more comments. Thank you. Phoenix TV is a Chinese language station. We also have some plans for uh, for the for for the future development. In Los Angeles, London, and the United States, we our offices around the world. Three thirty five countries in total. For for example, we also encounter some difficulties. We we also purchase lands and uh, renovate. And uh, a trade union is also important. If you uh, do not have the approval of the trade union, or if you invite a trade union conflicting with them, then you will be finished. In general, we are not expanding uh, globally. We are a media. So we observe China's go global efforts with our own eyes. I think Chinese, we have taken faster steps. A, a PW comp study was showed that non private enterprises in the year 2014. From 28 billion US dollars, it's a big increase. I think it is related to the Belt and Road Initiative as well as the other structures. I agree with Mr. Chen that we should not be too hasty. We, I, I'm opposed to crowd herding, and uh, crowd herding means that you don't care about anything. You just uh, take away what you want. And uh, in the end, there are about uh, 20,000 Chinese uh, uh, op companies operated overseas. In 90 countries, 90% uh, of them uh, are making a loss. Newsoft and uh, other companies are energetic companies and uh, and this maybe for sales it is uh, within reach mm -hmm. so too hasty is not good and also uh, the for the projects you can't be hasty as well that you uh, make this project and you move away another country very quickly the local government and people won't like it okay so um, as mr. Liu mentioned perhaps if you go there physically we met some problem but how about through internet because I'm aware Mr. Liu Jiren the new the, the new software you are leading is going into the internet health sector so internet access and internet access to the global economy will that be a solution for Chinese enterprises well in the past as we mentioned export Chinese export is mainly referred to the commodity export the the export of goods, but 
new new soft and as um, we are working in the high tech industry when we do the export um, we are doing something different now at the beginning it's transmitted through the internet so how do we pass the customs how do we pay the tariffs those are the problems we have to solve and now for the overseas healthcare market we we, we uh, our software are applied in the CT and MRI and the various equipments in hospitals around the globe and when we with the manufacturing industries we have um, we we work closely with many automobile companies so that they use our softwares to assist driving and uh, the household appliances companies they use our softwares in their um, fridges and their air conditions as well so many of the big brands they use our f software so we support their product so the greatest challenge we face is human into human interaction so this is not uh, the just the trust about the leaders of the two companies we need trust from two individuals from the companies so for these two people they are working very well but for the others if they disrupt the relation then we will have problem and as as Chinese economies is in the transformation the type of economy we are going to be and the, and the type of talent we are going to employ are very different so as the as a country is going global we need to change accordingly as well so I will come back to the point we need to be patient we see chi what, 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 what Chinese tourists is um, doing or what's their behavior in other countries they may think that oh just a few tourists but they, they don't think that way they were saying all oh, Chinese are this way so so the same for the Chinese enterprises. We may have, we might have a few champions and heroes companies, but with just one or two bad ones, our entire image will be sabotaged. So uh, we need to focus on that and we need to establish the human-to-human -human trust. Okay, just now President Liu mentioned a key that talent is uttermost important as Chinese enterprise go global. So I would like to ask a question to. President uh, to Mr. Xiangbing, because the Changkyong Business School that you lead is uh, that uh, is providing a huge amount of talents to China's business sector. So entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, um, what they want to learn, and um, and when you are going global, what curriculum are you going to set? Well, I would like to start with the story, then I will come back to the point. Last month, I go when I go to Greece, I go to Hertz, and uh, two thirty in the afternoon is closed because they have a a fiesta from two thirty to five o'clock. So they are like the socialist uh, uh, country. So they have problem that's understandable. So like like us, like a business, a uh, money-minded pe people, we we don't and. We don't understand, and um, yeah, this kind of work attitudes, and um, so, yeah. As Mr. Liu have mentioned, and um, as we glo we go global, we have to respect to the local culture. We have to respect to the local values because the thing they value, the dream they want to have, is very different. The life they want to live is different. As we innovate, some of the countries they make this much contribution not because they want to make a living out of it because they want to solve problems now as so if we or innovate because of money we won't have innovation powers we need to have different dreams and we need to work hard we need to innovate as a, as a result of that now another point is about career now because because in in the past they mentioned a lot on brand building, on brand innovation, and I hope that all of you sitting here can create world-class brands. But if we put a great emphasis on the China brands, or or and we attach the national tag too much, then it will create problems. 
German company when 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 he goes to make a speech. Now he make a, his first thing he mentioned is, I'm not a G German and uh, I don't represent. We are not just a German company. We are a global company. So Chinese enterprises need to think about that. They have to remove the tag. They have to show the, the greater global responsibility. That's important. And the first day that we create our business is an emphasis on the global business, on the global course. And one of the innovation we need to have is about humanities. Now, it's not about technology, because we can duplicate that, we can learn and copy that. But without the right humanities, without the right values, it's hard for us to integrate. So the first business, um, the, 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 there's a first business group created in 2012, incorporate philosophy and humanity subjects into its, man, its, into its curriculum. I think we have to do the same so that we can integrate with them. Now, in Western countries, in the European and American business schools, they put an emphasis on how to make money, how to make more money, how to make your enterprise more competitive. But as an emerging country, and top graduates from Chiang Kong Business School, if they only care about how to make more money, then we, we might not have a positive influence on the entire society. So we need to think about why we make money, how to make money, and after we make them, what to do with that. So we, we should not only learn from Harvard, from Stanford Business Schools, like uh, we want to make more and more money. Not only, not just that. So we need to be different and we can be different. We need to be confident that we can be different and we can lead. So this is the like we are seeing the earth from the moon. Because like in, in the past the Western countries have greater theories and we have to learn from that. For the in the past we are following. So we are forever the second class, forever we are doing the price warfare. Because you have you don't have innovative things, you don't have innovations. But as we view the earth from the moon then you can have new perspectives. Then the Chinese potentials can better release to improve the world. Okay, let's come back to Earth. <laughs> okay, let's no, don't go to the moon first. So let's come back to Earth. So I would like to direct this question to Ms. Krauss. I'm aware that you have good relationship. India, of course, the United States. But in your opinion, which one is more important, the crisis management or build um, a public figure or image? Before I answer that, can I just follow up? Important. I think there's a misperception a little bit that are teaching about making more and more money. I think that's not the issue. Mm -hmm. I think that um, what we're all talking about is how do you how do businesses as institutions create core values? That, they, um, that exist beyond making money. And uh, we did a global survey um, of what makes one company um, a, a master brand or right. um, a great citizen of the world and what makes another one less so. And I think it's a really important discussion for um, as the Chinese companies are looking for their own way forward in creating models. And there were four factors that mattered. Um, and uh, the first was alignment. Are people organized in the company? Do they understand what the company's mission is? The second thing was authenticity. Do people do, um, do they walk the talk? Do they do what they say they're going to do? The third one was attachment. And how do you create the emotional connection between the company and the uh, constituencies you have, your customers and other people? Why do they love this company, why do they fly your airline versus another? Um, but the most important thing, the top of this pyramid, was about um, advocacy. It was about purpose. Why does the company exist? It exists to do a great service or product, but it also exists to make money, but then use that money for the benefit of society. You want to have great employees? and you want people to buy your products or love your company, you have to answer this question about purpose. And I think that that is what companies in China need to think about, just like the companies around the world are thinking about. And I think if you can identify that as one of the core things to think about as you go global, with the, um, with the, the feeling 
local, that you will absorb the local culture and operate that way, you will be successful. And, um, and so I think, you know, I didn't want that just to pass because I think it's really, an, it's fundamental to the discussion we're having as, as this. And so now getting back to your question about crisis or reputation, I think if you do these things, and you will always have crisis because businesses always have crisis. You know, we have offices in 34 parts of the world. Every day I get up, there's as much good thing happening when it But if you build your reputation in the right way, you have a deposit in the bank for crisis. You have reputational equity. You build um, so that there's a level of trust that if something does happen, that people give you the benefit of the doubt. And so I think it's really important that as you think about these things, that's why building, that's why doing what you say you're going to do and building the sense of trust, not only in China among Chinese companies, but with as you go global, there's probably nothing more important. And people, young people today, if you want the best employees in the world, they want to work for companies they trust. And if you want loyal um, employees, and you want people to pour their heart into their work, whether they, whether they don't or whether they observe a Women's Day, it's because they care about their company. And that's the job of leadership in the company, is to create that sense of values. So, so far, you don't have the office in mainland in China. Do you have any oh, plan? Of course we do. We've been here since 1989 <laughs> in China <laughs> with APCO. My company has been really? here. Yes, uh, we've been here for a very long time. So um, that's why I feel this is a special place, and I've watched all the um, tremendous growth here. And I think what has happened in 30 years is remarkable. Um, but I think that you know, if you turn the clock back when we were starting in China, Japan was facing some of the same issues in going abroad, and they learned how to um, adapt to local cultures, and they spent a lot of time and effort. Um, learning how to teach the companies how to be. Um, and I think that there's some, there's some parallels in, in what happened and, and the way the brand uh, of the country as, as products went out got elevated. And I think um, you know, this is a remarkable country and I think there's a great opportunity there. But yes, China is a very important part of our company and has been for a long time. Your Oh, for App, for Apple, such, such, such a great company. I, I'm not aware he has um, presence here. Well, uh, you really need more communication and publicity. Well, and, and, and she has a great client, and you're, you're not aware. And, and I have, a, I have a exclusive news. You know Yao Ming, right? MBA, and he has big size. But the one of the greatest reasons why Yao Ming is playing in NBA is Apple. So, if if you um, you use the analogy that the other enterprises are, are the other Yao Ming's, okay, they want to go into playing MBA. So you played a huge role in helping Yao Ming to get into MBA. So uh, will you play a great role to help the Chinese enterprises? Yeah. Since we work with a number of them now, our one of our oldest clients in China is Costco. When they were having difficulty with Chinese flagships, we. Um, we worked, we've been working with them for almost a year. So um, it's been a great honor. And you know, we, we um, work with a lot of, of, of companies. We're a very quiet company. We're very discreet. <laughs> we'd rather our clients be successful, you know, and then we're, we're quiet. I know that there are some business secrets that are not suitable to tell you. So some parts, maybe it's uh, very sensitive and it's uh, confidential. So um, she preferred not to answer. And we have many friends from media, so uh, for the last 10 to 20 minutes, we'll have our media to ask some questions. Uh, so please give this gentleman the microphone, and please address yourself and who you work for. Thank you very much. Thank you. From 21st Century Business News, China Business News. So, uh, Guilin Airlines um, purchase case, that is my question. We know that uh, tourism airlines is often associated with low-cost airlines. So my question is how to ensure the profit after you purchased uh, Guilin Airlines. 
and uh, the previous owner of Guilin Airlines uh, did not do well. So how uh, 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 Hainan Airlines should not, how could not repeat the mistake? And uh, I also want also at the case the question was, uh, I have been in this industry for 16 years. And uh, we have more than 500 airplanes. We have 18 airlines, and uh, Hainan Airlines is the safest airline company in the world. And uh, we are adapting ourselves to local conditions. And uh, in the One Belt, One Road initiative, we have made uh, a number of arrangements, for example, in Guangxi in Fuzhou, as well as in overseas countries like Kazakhstan. Guilin is, is a brand name city in China for tourism. We hope that our purchase will further promote tourism aviation in China. And, uh, and uh, tourists have different requirements for airline services than uh, business travelers. I don't think uh, the current problems will pose a big challenge. I'm confident that this case will further promote tourism in Guilin. My, the second question. I'm not from media. Can I have a chance to raise a question? Based on the U.S. experience and the Japanese experience, as well as our experience in China, I think uh, for a country to become strong, its economy should be strong. For the economy to be strong, the economy must have a number of strong companies. And uh, Mr. Chen's Hainan Airlines has become one of the top 500 companies in the world and uh, it has set, a good, set up a good example for other Chinese companies. I once took a look into uh, Hainan Airlines. I think, and uh, first, in the capital market, Hainan Airlines is very active. And uh, I learned that this year, Hainan Airlines raised 68 billion yuan from the capital market and uh, I think so. We need to check with Mr. Chen. Sixty-eight billion yuan, right? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Basically true. The merger and the acquisition cases of Hainan Airlines. Uh, I'm from. Uh, Chong Kong Graduate School of Business, and uh, I think uh, Hainan Airlines is very successful, and we also know other successful stories of Hainan Airlines. Indeed, it is very successful. So, um, Mr. Chen, uh, I have two questions for you. So, do you think the Hainan Airlines group will get listed in the stock market. Do you have such plan? And uh, my second question is, will you not, when will you stop uh, in your capital market moves? Thank you, Mr. Fu from New China uh, Group. Uh, Mr. Fu himself is a very successful entrepreneur, and uh, he is uh, well known in China. Actually, China does not have a large number of entrepreneurs, so we know each other. For IPO, it's really our business secret. And I have not made up my mind about the stock market listing of Hainan Airlines Group, and I think it depends. And when conditions are right, maybe uh, we will. And uh, Hainan Airlines will not stop in our capital in the capital market because we have good products and services we can raise funds from the capital market and we can get 
of uh, financial support for our international mergers and acquisitions. I think we are living in a great era, the Chinese dream. I think it will one hundred fifty to two hundred companies in top Fortune five hundred companies for China's its uh, Chinese dream. So we need to work together to build enough competitive Chinese uh, companies to join uh, peers. It is required by the Chinese dream as well as our responsibility. Let's work together for that objective. Uh, so, Mr. Cross, do you think uh, that among the 500 companies globally, China should uh, make 200 or at least 150? Do you think it's possible? Well, yes. I mean, it's a, a big country with a big economy. I, I think that we're going to see a big change in the next 20 years of all the listed companies. I think we won't recognize half of them that are there now, and uh, there's a big opportunity. Next question. I'm running a WeChat account, a new media platform. My question goes to Mr. Xiang from Changkong Graduate Business School. Many American universities have established their China centers. I talked with those people, and uh, they said that China has some problem with its international education. That's why they came to China. I used to be a consultant, and I think business education is insufficient for Chinese students. It's particularly prominent when they want to start up their own business. So what's your opinion on this issue? Several years ago, we had an interview with Chinese media. There are three generations of Chinese business schools. The first, uh, the first school, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, it was a typical example of first generation business school. And they invite, they spread the Western knowledge to China. And we are a second generation business school, We should not only spread knowledge, but also generate our own knowledge and insights. And only in this way can a Chinese business school rank high in global index of business schools. So it's not only for uh, ourselves, but also for the country. As the Chinese economy further grows, we will take more responsibilities. And uh, Western countries uh, have taken dominant positions in the world for centuries. It must be changed. If you want to change, you must have new ideas. So it needs a lot of investment. The second generation business school focuses on the problems in China, how to com operate, how to compete, how to affect the world economy. In the past five years, we made a lot of preparations for a third generation business school, not only doing well in China, but also pay more attention to global issues, development issue, global governance, and many others. So that is my division of three generations of business schools. We have a good opportunity now. The Chinese economy, China is rising. We have slept for 500 years. Now it's time for us to wake up. This must be changed. Thank you. So it's a big new renaissance. And Mr. Liu, you also has your own college. Would you like to have cooperation with Chang Kong Graduate School of Business? And I think our teachers need their training. My, co my college is training technicians and uh, engineers, and uh, uh, his uh, business school is training uh, managers who can uh, oversee engineers and uh, technicians. Please give an opportunity uh, to take the floor to that part of the audience. CEO of Wellbridge uh, International from Cambodia, and I'm also uh, on the IAC of APCO Worldwide. Uh, my question is, the human capital has been mentioned, 
playing the global role was mentioned. What, uh, why, why don't we have more of exchange and more of interaction? Students to students, businessmen to businessmen, universities to universities, even schools at the earlier stages where we, we, we give the chance for international community to interact with Chinese and deal with Chinese instead of seeing Chinese only through the eyes of media, which is not always fair. On the other hand, if we can have some certain business models where it's not only an acquisition or a company buying another, why not to come with some innovative projects that go jointly between a Western company and a Chinese company where the outcome is the uh, cooperation and coordination between uh, the two sides of the globe, uh, the, the East and West. Thank you. And uh, which guests do you want to ask on the stage? Well, uh, I would ask uh, our friend from the uh, <laughs> company <laughs> news. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I think it's the right question for me and uh, for my company. We already have four colleges and uh, th we have three uh, universities that can offer a PhD degree and a bachelor's degree. We also have the fourth college is a medical university. So we have four universities in total. In running these four universities, we have come we have give free free reign to our students. We will try to create an international environment, and we partner with foreign universities so that our students can spend some time overseas in their study. So we in the foreign universities we have about thirty two thousand students. We also have international students. I think it is a very good uh, op opportunity to mix with foreign students in your college uh, times. They can learn how to work together with each other. They know they can know uh, foreign cultures, and our medical university is in partnership with our Dutch uh, partners. So your second question is about. The ways of cooperation, models of cooperation, and uh, it's not just about mergers and acquisitions. We will try to transcend this traditional model. We want to have a uh, open innovation. I think uh, it is. Uh, we are uh, Chinese uh, companies are exploring new models of cooperation, and uh, we have learned more and more. Thank you. Thank you for your question. 到这里即将结束了。我们看到台上的嘉宾为我们提供的那种从容、淡定和理性。我们需要时间，不着急。是在不着急，慢慢来的时候。We need a time, and uh, uh, we need to further improve ourselves. And uh, for sixty, uh, fifty-six minutes have passed. And uh, I think we have uh, learned a lot from our five people on the first uh, stage. We need uh, to we can learn from new software and uh, uh, airlines. Mr. Chen starts his career when he was only 16 years old, and uh, we will wait for the IPO of Hainan Airlines Group for new software. He has been working in this industry for 24 years, and for an international company, we must know ourselves well. And after that, you should also know who you are not. And Mr. Liu from Phoenix TV Group mentioned that sometimes you need to you need to wait. You you should not move. You should know that what you are not. Uh, in the third stage, in the, you should forget who you are. So Mr. Xiang from Chong Kong Graduate School of Business mentioned that, that you should forget that you are a Chinese company. You are a global company. Then you can take a look at the Earth from the surface of Moon. 
So after you forget yourself, and uh, now it's time to contact Miss Miss Claus, and uh, and uh, Yao Ming used to be your client, and uh, more and more Chinese companies will become your clients. Those Chinese companies are among the 500 companies. So please join me in giving a warm applause to all the participants.